When I said to somebody today I was coming down to chair a conference on pain, the reaction was, on what? And I said, on pain, P-A-I-N. And they were surprised. They thought, you know, what's the relevance of that? And I think one of the issues that people who suffer from chronic pain face is that most people don't understand it, have no concept of what it's about. I think people don't ask enough about pain and don't ask enough about the impact of it on people's lives and therefore people end up losing their jobs, um, getting very depressed and it, because it's just ignored. Managing chronic pain is very important for the population so we had to do something because uh, it's not done properly across Europe. I think we just need to raise the profile of pain um, as a specialism or a disease area on its own, where it's at the moment I feel it's just seen as a byproduct of something else. In the past three SIP symposia, we have made progress just for the general discussion and general recognition of chronic pain as a challenge to the society. Now we are focusing on the very important topic of reintegration of chronic pain patients into the workforce. And we have discussed and prepared recommendations for indicators of quality of pain management that can be used then by countries, by institutions, to measure whether they make progress or not. Chronic pain is unfortunately till now causing a lot of uh, uh, economical uh, loss and uh, also a lot of uh, societal uh, uh, burden in uh, the working population. So uh, scientifically we should carefully look at these two different aspects. The focus has to be on the ones who are in charge of making the rules. And this is why, you know, the effort of SIP has been so much focused also on politicians and regulatory authorities, because at the end they are the ones, you know, defining the patterns. So each country has its own Ministry of Health with its own programs. It's very difficult to harmonize all these, yeah? The European community or the European Parliament has an important role in making rules, in making a guideline how to behave in each European country. In Europe, within the European Union, we have another level of government that can actually influence healthcare policy and in this case to the benefit of the patients hopefully. We've done a lot of work leading up to this um, conference. We've had numerous teleconferences and we've all drawn upon the work that we've all done in our respective countries. And uh, surprisingly, actually, it's all very, very similar. We all had said the same things on the teleconferences and um, all the literature is, is, again, very similar. So, actually, I think it, we, you can be reasonably confident that we are able to cross boundaries and cross cultures in, in looking at how we can usefully measure um, the quality of pain management in different countries. The patient is the leader and we are coaches of the patient to improve the care of the patient, to improve his program. And that you can't do that as a doctor alone. You need to have a nurse, you need to have a psychologist, you need to have special trained people in chronic pain, yeah, how to do, how to manage pain. Mm -hmm.